Assalamu alaikum. Today, before going to the lesson, before going to the tutorial of anatomy, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your comments, suggestions, subscriptions, confidence, encouragement, and support uh, towards me and asking me especially for making more videos of anatomy so dear friends uh, I am very happy and it's a pleasure to serve you in such a beautiful way and I can tell you that your compliments and your support enabled me to work harder and share you the little knowledge of anatomy that I have in the hope of benefiting uh, new learners uh, as well as to myself in particular. Um, dear friends, I am doing all these stuff, all these things uh, using the easiest and the simplest way that I can. Uh, and we have already uh, uploaded three trial videos of anatomy and you might have watched the uploaded videos in which we were talking about a little bit about the carpal bones, metacarpal bones and uh, phalanges. However, from today onwards, uh, we shall do something different. We shall start dealing with the anatomy of the upper limb as a whole. So, when we start studying the anatomy of the upper limb, it is important to have a profound knowledge of the bones of the upper limb. So, before going to the bones of the upper limb, uh, now, I would like to remind you the four important parts of the upper limb. So, we have the shoulder region. This is the important part and it gives the structural stability to the upper limb. And mm, secondly, the brachium or the arm, we say arm or the brachium. And uh, the third one is the forearm or the antibrachium and the hand or simply the menus, menus or hand. So these four reasons are very important and we shall discuss these areas one by one. So we shall start from the shoulder region and from the shoulder region we shall start talking about the bones and I am today here I am picking up the clavicle as a bone from the upper limb from the shoulder region. So shoulder region basically the shoulder region uh, includes the pectoral region on the front the pectoral region on the front of the chest here this is the pectoral region we see pectoral region and uh, the axilla here this is the axilla or the armpit this is the axilla and uh, the third part of the the, the third part of the shoulder region is the scapular region the area surrounding comprising the parts around the scapula on the back on the dorsal surface so these three parts of the shoulder region we shall discuss one after another but before that we have to uh, have uh, a profound knowledge of the bones and so I am just starting to talk about the clavicle as a bone from the shoulder region so let's move forward uh, talking about the clavicle act when you look at your own clavicle from the superior aspect, this is the superior view and this is the inferior view. This is the inferior view. So this one is the lateral side and this is the medial side. So don't confuse, we have two clavicles, on one on the right and one on the left. So you can consider any one, but you should remember that this is the medial one and this is the lateral one. So, basically the lateral end, as you can see here, the lateral end is flat and the medial end is enlarged, the middle end is uh, large as compared to the lateral end. And the middle two-third, you see here, the middle two-third is starting from here. This part, the middle two-third, it is anteriorly convex, this is the anterior part. So anteriorly you can see here this is convex, anteriorly convex or you can say posteriorly concave. And 
the lateral one third is anteriorly concave you can see here anteriorly concave or you can say posteriorly convex and the inferior surface in the inferior aspect you see here in the inferior surface of the middle one third this is the central part the middle one third is grouped longitudinally uh, here in the middle one third here so this is the subclavian groove so we said this is the subclavian groove here three important points of the clavicle this bone is the only long bone with membranous ossification membranous ossification I am not going to uh, describe what is membranous ossification but you should understand that there are two types of ossification one is the endochondral ossification and uh, the second one is the uh, membranous ossification so this is the only bone with membranous ossification in the whole human body and uh, this bone is the only bone with the primary ossification centers having two primary ossification centers so two primary ossification centers appears here in the shaft between the fifth and the sixth weeks of intrauterine life please remember that fifth and the sixth weeks of intrauterine life uh, these two primary ossification centers appear so this is the only long bone with two primary ossification centers and this bone has no marrow or medullary cavity this is the most distinguishing character of this clavicle so most of the long bones has a marrow cavity or medullary cavity but this bone doesn't have a medullary cavity it doesn't have and the clavicle joints uh, articulate with the acromion the highest uh, point of the scapula the process of scapula acromion process of a scapula and it forms the acromioclavicular joint so this is sometimes we refer this is the acromial end sometimes we refer it call the acromial end and this end the medial end sometimes it is called the sternal end sternal end because it articulates with the sternum on the front of the chest and it forms the sternoclavicular joint it's the ridge which is called the trapezoid ridge so this is the trapezoid ridge this is the trapezoid ridge and uh, and this area is the attachment of the trapezoid and the conoid parts of coracoclavicular ligament so this is also a part of attachment of the coracoclavicular ligament it means the joining the coracoid process and the clavicle so uh, this will be discussed uh, on the joints of the upper limb later on but keep in mind that this is the uh, trapezoid ridge where there is the trapezoid and the conoid parts of coracoclavicular ligament and talking about the attachments of the muscles I am only talking about the important attachments here this is the lateral end and here on this part this area this is the area of attachment of the trapezius muscle so I am writing here this is the trapezius muscle and here this area I am not repeating the parts because this is the superior aspect and the lateral end so of the lateral end uh, there is the attachment of the deltoid muscle so this is the deltoid and this deltoid muscle uh, is right over here uh, here is also the deltoid muscle you can see here this is also the deltoid attachment right over here because this area and this area are the same on the inferior aspect also you can see the attachment of the deltoid muscle and here 
here is the attachment of the subclavius muscle this is the and this is subclavian group because here is the insertion of the subclavian muscle subclavius you can see subclavius subclavius muscle and the large part of the medial two-third here this is the area of insertion of the pectoralis major muscle this is the pectoralis major muscle and this pectoralis major muscle is reflected on this area also on the inferior aspect also you can see the attachment right over here so this area is the attachment of the pectoralis major muscle and the important muscle of the neck this area on the medial uh, medial part of the superior aspect this area is the sternocleidomastoid this is the sternocleido sternocleidomastoid muscle this is the sternal cleidomastoid muscle here okay uh, that's all about the superior aspect in the inferior aspect there are more insertions there are more attachments of the muscles uh, here on this external end on inferior aspect this part is the insertion of the external high weight muscle so this is the external high weight muscle okay and here on the inferior aspect and on the lateral side I have already uh, drawn here the trapezius muscle and this trapezius muscle will also be reflected here on the inferior aspect this area this is the area of insertion of the same muscle the trapezius muscle and I have talked about this with this part and here uh, small incision this is also the trapezoid and the coron uh, conoid parts this is the trapezoid part and this is the conoid part so this together forms the coracoclavicular ligament I have to mention you an important clinical part of the clavicle that uh, this clavicle when it is fractured the most common side the prone area of fracture is this part this uh, between the two curvatures of the bone mm, the uh, concave one and the convex one so between these two curvatures this part is the most common area most common site of fracture and the trapezius muscle this this trapezius muscle alone is unable to support the whole weight of the upper limb the whole weight of the upper limb so the lateral fragment this lateral frag fragment it is uh, displaced downwards by the weight of the limbs you see here so this trape trapezius muscle uh, cannot support the weight and that is the reason this part because there is the fracture and so this part will be pulled downwards displaced downwards by the weight of the upper limb and that's all about the uh, anatomy of the clavicle and I hope that you would get uh, the most of it and we are going to talk about the scapula in the next video and thank you for your support and thank you for watching keep watching and if you don't subscribe the channel please subscribe and we shall bring you uh, more precise and easier methods of learning anatomy thank you for watching until next time have a nice day